The journey is the character building, the, the habits, all the little pieces and the blocks that build the mansion. You don't have to wait till your podcast goes viral to then be happy. You don't have to wait till your business earns a certain amount and you have that Lamborghini in the garage to be happy and enjoy being a part of your business. For a long time, I was walking through life blind, you know, and while being blind, I was also telling myself the story that oh, I'm so self-aware. If I am like feeling scarcity about money, then how am I going to show up to a sales call and get someone to invest into my frequency when I'm feeling scarce? No way. All right, welcome back, everybody. You're tuning into Before the Money. If you haven't subscribed already, go and locate that button somewhere, no matter what channel you're listening to this on. We're doing something really different today. So I'm Jack William, and I'm joined by a beautiful friend of mine. Hey, guys. My name is Elise Riley, and I am from the Generation Elevation podcast. And same thing, if you haven't heard of my podcast before, make sure you go click follow, whether you're listening on Spotify or Apple Play. This is a little bit of a collaboration episode. So whether you're listening to this on my podcast or Elisa's podcast, um, we're going to pr- try and provide some value to you guys as we round up the year. We want to give you everything you need to go and crush your goals, your ambitions, your visions, however you phrase it. We're wanting you to crush next year, your 2023. Or if you're listening to this and it's already 2023, then just crush life in general. <laughs> you know. So we're going to talk about... Our experiences, we're going to give you some frameworks, we're going to kind of spitball this. This is a new format for both of us, you know, Mm. both just chatting, we don't have a plan, but we have lots of experience and we have lots of enthusiasm. Yes. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I rocked up today and I said, Jack, oh, this frequency is on another level and co-creating with you today is just going to be such a vibe, so I cannot wait. 100%. So, uh, Elise, she's got lots of experiences and in terms of like business and coaching and things like that. But she's also very kind of in tune with her own emotions. She's quite in tune with energetic whatever (laughs) you'd call it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And um, so whereas I I consider myself to be quite like logical and, Mm. you know, practical and all that kind of stuff, maybe that's just the masculine feminine playing here. Um, so I think this should be a nice little collaboration. Should we get into it? Yeah, hundred percent. I think you said that perfectly. Awesome. So to kind of give a little bit of context, how has this year been for you? Whew. Okay. So I would love to sit here, Jack, and be like, oh my gosh, it was sunshine and rainbows and amazing. Mm-hmm. And it was, but in the most unexpected way. For me, it was so expansive whereby I was met with a lot of obstacles and Mm -hmm. challenges. My year started off with having to move out of my home with very little notice. Mm. And literally, I got to that day of moving out and didn't actually know where I was going. I was just more so excited to get out of that place. And I was fully leaping into the unknown And for me, I am really huge on manifestation and creating the life of what you want by your thoughts and your energy. So for me, I had a very specific house or energy that I wanted to step into for this new environment. And I was being met with places that were just not it. Mm -hmm. And I remember a friend saying to me, Elise, like sometimes you've just got to settle for close, like 75%. And I said to this person, well, if one day someone gets down on one knee to me and says, Elise, I'm like 75% in love with you. Will you marry me? I would be like, wait, what? Mm. (laughs) So why should I settle for average when I know that there is that 100% out there? And I applied this to this house. So I literally moved out into my car with nowhere to go and I was just kind of couch surfing for a day, literally a day. And then as soon as I let go of that resistance, I then found a place on Flatmates that had everything. It was the 100% that I was looking for. And I remember rocking up to that first inspection and the first sign I saw was like, welcome home. And like Rufus was playing, which is my favorite DJ. And like, I just had all these synchronicities happen for me. 
So it was like, okay, a big year of leaping in the unknown. Like that was the start of my year. And then I went deep into lots of coaching containers and just learning a lot about myself and all of these experiences reconnected me back to connecting with my soul, with my spirit guides or whatever it is that you believe in, um, using your own discernment as well while you listen to this podcast and to when I speak. It's like, for me, I believe in spirit guides and my inner being is always communicating with me. There's always a book being written and received by each and every one of us every single day. And like, for me, I refuse to listen to that. Because I was like, no, that's too woo. And I was rejecting that part of myself. So I would go super logical and super masculine. And I was met with a shit ton mm. of resistance. So it, all in all, all these experiences kind of led me back to that connection with myself. And when I was in that frequency, I had to actually move out again. Like six months later, I get notice, okay, you need to move. And I had a, a lot more notice this time. And I was like, okay. Well, that just means something better is coming my way. And still again, I was being met with 55%. I was met with 20% and I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I should just settle. Mm. Maybe I should sh- like, maybe mm. I should settle. And it was really interesting because it got to that last week again and then an opportunity come up that was just 10 times better than what I ever had imagined for myself and honestly it's the first time I've really felt at home on the coast and from there it was a just a huge learning piece of receival like receiving help receiving love and saying thank you when someone gives you a compliment like just simple things and when I started to take like those actions and start receiving a bit more like all these opportunities just started to fall into my lap because I was making that, I guess, energetic statement that I'm ready. Mm-hmm. So all in all, it's been a very character building year and I'm so, so grateful for that. And I'm really excited to see where I now go, in, especially into 2023, mm-hmm. learning all of those lessons that I have learned this year. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've, ha- you've had some identity changes, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 100%. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll get into that. But, like, mm. this is, like, I feel like the theme of the end of year is just, like, there's a underwhelming, uh, like, underlying overwhelm. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> because I feel like when you get to the end of the year, it's like, oh, fuck, have I done enough? Mm. You know, have I done enough? And, like, am I in the right place? Like, am I doing the right things? Like, fuck, now I need to set goals for next year. And, like, did I actually complete the goals that I would set this year? And, like, there's – and maybe I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. When I get to the end of the year, I'm like, fuck, another year has gone by and nothing's changed. But we were actually chatting about this before we started. Yeah. When you're an ambitious person, that, like, narrative tends to play a lot for you. But I challenge you right now just to – Try and visualize yourself six months ago. I bet you that's a completely unrecognizable person. You know, I'm going through something right now where I've I've literally, I've been up since 3.30 this morning just fully packing down my my entire house because I left it to the last few hours (laughs) um, as I do. But I was kind of like sitting there in an empty house before coming to the podcast and I felt like really sad. And I was like, fuck. And then I reminded myself of all the other times that I've felt like that and I've been like okay now there is now this huge gap in my life for something better to come along Mm. and that ties in perfectly to like the lessons of the story that you just shared yeah you know um but my year in a hole has been a fucking roller coaster yeah tell me about your year so I started off this year as like a fashion guy (laughs) yeah (laughs) true um I, I started off like fully dedicated to fashion and building the brand and all that kind of stuff has, as I have been for like the last eight years. And somewhere along the line, I just got out of my own way and realized that I have been pushing a mountain up, uh, a rock uphill for the last eight years Ooh. because there are 50% of the things in the fashion game and the product game and all that kind of stuff that I love. And the rest of it, 
I despise. Mm. So when it came to doing the important work, I would procrastinate and procrastinate and procrastinate and procrastinate because I internally just loathed the thought of having to do the, that particular work, right? So I had to make a really hard decision. Well, I didn't have to make a really hard decision. I chose to make a really hard decision. Um, halfway through the year, essentially, it was like, okay, eight years of work, that's fine. I learned heaps. Um, I've got skills from that. But what is going to propel me forward in a way that I'm truly passionate about? So that's when I finally leaned into like the photography, videography, content creation, all that kind of stuff. Um, Which you are amazing at, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. I am. Yeah. Um, And that's because it's effortless. Not effortless as in I don't have to do any work, but effortless as in it doesn't require a strain for me to do the work it's just same as this podcast for me Mm. like so many hours so many late nights but effortless you know yeah Yeah. i do know yeah um so I, i made the hard decision i've still got like i don't know 50 or 60 grand worth of stock sitting in like a storage unit like costing me money um but I I made the decision at the end of this month. So I've already I've cancelled like the warehouse lease. So I've got till the end of this month to figure out what I'm going to do with it all. Mm-hmm. So I'm either going to donate it all to charity or try and bulk sell it or something like that. Um, I'm leaning more so towards the first option. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had to set myself a deadline. I'm like I'm not getting to the end of this year and not make not having that hard decision made because mm-hmm. I feel like a part of me has been stressing over making this decision for probably the last four or five years Whoa. <laughs> you know? but Whoa. it's the sunk cost fallacy right i was like oh, i've already put three years into it oh, i've already put four years into it oh, i've already put five years into it oh, i've already put eight years into it <laughs> like you yeah, know yeah um so yeah i suppose that's a little bit of, of something for you guys listening if you do have that hard decision that you need to make whether that's you know asking that girl or guy out on a date whether that's breaking up with that girl or guy, whether it's mm. moving out of home, whether that's, you know, starting the business, whether it's ending the business, whether it's starting a podcast, whatever that hard decision is you pro- procrastinate on making, flip a coin. Because if you've been thinking about it for longer than 30 days, it's probably a yes. Yo, so I just checked our statistics, right? It's not something I do very often, but I was blown away. Our subscriber base has exploded over the last few months. So I want to thank all of you who have clicked that subscribe button. You show up to the episodes every single week. You support, you participate, and you take action for yourself. And for all of you who haven't subscribed yet, you want to be part of the club, go ahead and locate that button on whatever platform you're listening to this on. The subscribe button is usually pretty bright. If you want to be notified every time we drop a valuable episode and while you're on a roll, why don't you go ahead and leave behind a five-star rating. Let us know we're producing value because we're going to continue showing up and doing our thing every single week, bringing on high-value guests and sharing unordinary stories of how they got there. So if you're an action taker and you don't want to miss out on an opportunity to gain valuable knowledge that's going to propel you toward your success, go ahead and click that subscribe button and let's get stuck back into this episode lots of transformation for me this year but it has also been one of the most fruitful years and not just monetarily but also my personal growth and letting go of my perfectionism which is really just a made-up thing that I keep telling myself that I've got as most of you probably do the same Um, letting go of that that's been a huge weight off my shoulders a Mm. massive 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 way so moving into 2023 it's really about knuckling down. Oh, another thing I want to touch on. Another thing I want to touch on real quick. This is the biggest epiphany that I had and the, <laughs> probably the main reason why I decided to close down um, the f- like merchandise side of Anarchy. Yeah, tell me. So, from when I started my first business in or first like official business in grade nine, I've always been running multiple things at one time and that's because I have lots of varied interests, but I think deep down, I was just trying to cover my bases so that I wasn't fully dedicating myself to one thing in case that didn't take off. But there's no hope of any of them taking off unless I dedicate myself to one of them. So, the big reason why I've cut down 
all the, you know, the fat from around my business, all the things that are stressing me, all the things that um, I'm not 100% passionate about is because for the next 12 months, I am going to focus on one thing, just one, just one. And for all you guys who are listening, I'm actually telling you this for the first time. Well, I was going to say claim it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> claim it. So, um, as of as of next year, I've actually already started doing this for a few clients, but I haven't marketed or anything like that. So, as of next year, if you're a coach, if you're a business owner, if you are a business, if you are someone who wants to boost your influence, boost your personal brand, boost your financial gain, boost your entire life, I am transitioning Anarchy into a podcast production agency because nice. this is the thing that lights me up and yeah. I've gotten really fucking good at it. And I'm really good at helping other people with it as well. So reach out to me if you want a spot in our first beta group. Um, Very, very limited. And I really want to work with people that want to grow, people that are enthusiastic about what they do and they want to impact above all else. So reach out to me um, and we'll have a chat because I want to help as many people get this joy that we get to experience on a frequent level. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Going, linking that back to what we were saying just then about if you've been thinking about doing a podcast for a while, Mm. that won't actually go away until you do it. Like I remember when I first started my podcast, Generation Elevation, I spent probably um, nearly 12 months thinking about doing it. Originally, the idea was like, oh, well, I don't know if I could do it by myself, so I'll just do it with my best friend at the time and then I had a falling out with that person and then it was like oh I'll do it with my housemate and a lot of people would just come to me and just say Elise like we should do a podcast together we should do a podcast together and I was like yeah okay like cool we're having amazing conversations like you and I right now Mm. and then it just come to me one day I realized that the common denominator in these conversations is me Mm. everyone's everyone wants to start a podcast in my circle with me because I am the key And so if I just create my own podcast and just do the thing that has been sitting in the back of my mind that I haven't been doing, if I just do it, Mm. then I can have whoever I want sitting at my table with me and co-creating with me and having a conversation that is expansive, that not just only lights the both of us involved up, but also everyone else that gets to share and listen as well, Mm. which same thing for me. This is why I love like what I do because through conversation, we actually elevate frequencies. And when you elevate yourself to a level that is of joy, of fun, of like happiness, right? You allow in experiences into your life that are of that same energy as well. And that's why I love this. Yeah. And like, I feel like personally, my growth um, mentally, um, in terms of my communication, in terms of my awareness for myself, social awareness. Like I, I say this to people all the time. Like you could spend tens of thousands of dollars on courses to achieve the same growth that you would get from doing a podcast consistently for 12 months. Mm. Do you feel that? I feel like there's a place for both. Yeah. Right? It depends really on what you want and how you learn because everyone's different. Mm. Yeah? Uh, Some people have their rep system, which is like an NLP term, as audience. And so they will learn through audio. Like people sometimes will will prefer to read a book via like Audible versus actually a physical book. Mm. Whereas for me, I'm so visual that I need to have the physical book and see it. Like I can see Mm. in school, I'd be able to see a picture on the whiteboard and remember it straight Mm. away. However, some people just don't learn that way. And so it really depends on how specifically people prefer to learn and how they filter in information. So Mm. everything I believe has a place Mm. like you know, if you're doing what you do from a place of effortlessness, from a place of love and joy, like that will attract the right people to it anyway, whether that is coaching, whether that is a podcast, whether it's writing a book, like whatever it is that you do, it could be just like an artist, right? You will attract your people. If you show up, your people will too. So yeah, whatever it is that you do, 
like it doesn't really matter mm. as long as you're enjoying it. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. And, I, and upon reflection, I think it is just like the consistency muscle. Mm-hmm. You know, that's one thing that this has helped me, like having to show up and release every single week past the point where it's a fun novelty. You know, like the first six weeks, I was just like anything I could possibly do to work on the podcast, like I'm there. And because it was fun, it was exciting. I was in that stage where you're constantly accumulating new things. Um, and it was just that consistency muscle because it's in the public domain. If I don't release on a Wednesday, I've got people messaging me like, <laughs> oh, what's the go? You yeah. know, and it's that like community that now holds me accountable, which I haven't had in the past. Yeah. You know, being a solo entrepreneur, you're very much having to be self-driven in lots of ways unless you set contingencies like a really powerful network, which I didn't have until probably this year, Mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, just working that consistency muscle has probably made waves and echoed out to the rest of my life in lots of ways. I feel like that's why I view this decision to start this so highly. Like it's one of the best decisions I've ever made, you know, apart from being born. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, I guess you do decide that too. Yeah. Um, Apparently, I didn't want to come out though, so... Oh, yeah, same. Maybe that's why we have each other's projection here, yeah. right? Uh, another thing that you spoke about, in, I, that I was just like clicking. I was, yeah. I felt that energy in my body when you said it about letting go of anarchy and, mm. and moving toward what feels effortless and what feels good. And... Uh, is just so cool because it's a huge lesson that I've learned this year as well, like letting go of that resistance. Mm. For me, uh, I definitely found myself getting sucked into the stereotypical personal development world of like you've got to get up at 5 a.m. You've got to do all of these things and hustle, hustle, hustle to like make it happen. Mm -hmm. And the thing with that, like if you're showing up from a place of like I have to do this, the energy is going to be so different versus if you're showing up from a place of I get to do this. Yeah. There is two types of action. There is the action that comes from love and there's the action that comes for love. So it's like you're doing things be- based on the condition that you get this result mm. or you're doing things just because you genuinely enjoy the journey. And for me this year has been huge about like learning to love the process Mm. and the journey because we want those things that we want because of the journey. Like imagine, right, you go on a holiday. I'm sure so many people listening to this, if you're going overseas or going away over Christmas, right, I'm sure many of you are. You don't just book the holiday to get to the end of the journey, to get to the holiday, right, because If you did, then you wouldn't actually leave your house. You wouldn't go on the holiday in the first place because at the end of the holiday, you come home, Mm -hmm. right? We booked the holiday not for the end destination, but for the journey. We go to explore every single day and do something new and meet new people and try new food and have new experiences. Like that is what I believe is life. Mm -hmm. And so if you can, coming into 2023 make decisions and take action from a place of love rather than like not asking that person out because then this you'll get this result or not working out for the sake of looking a certain way it's like no I want to work out because I actually really enjoy like looking after my body and it deserves the respect that I give it by moving and feeding it in a nourishing way or I don't want to start um, that business, like not starting the business for the sake of getting rich quick, Mm -hmm. right? It's like you are starting the business because you actually enjoy like your photography and your film and stuff because you enjoy it, not doing it for that end result. And when you do that, that is when those results easily and effortlessly come to you anyway. And when they do you'll be so like not even worried about that. You've already got your sights set on more. Uh, So I would say rather than relying on motivation, relying on inspiration, like taking that step back to really be with yourself, meditate, like nap, do whatever you've got to do to just receive that inspiration and then go. Mm. Because when you receive inspiration, nothing will ever get in your way or ever stop you from doing that thing 
Whereas when we procrastinate and do all that kind of stuff, right, self-sabotage, it comes from a place of like, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. Or like, it doesn't feel like I've just got to get it done. I've got to make it happen. And it's like, I've got to ask, keep messaging this person because I want them to like go out with me. It's like, well, why don't you just let it flow? Like, why don't you just let the inspiration come to you and then take action rather than taking that action from a place of motivation? I have to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing as well because procrastination like feels horrible. Like it feels so, so, so horrible when you're in that state of like, oh, I know exactly the thing that I need to be doing right now and then just every cell in my body is looking for whatever task I can do instead. You know, and for a long time, I thought that that was just, you know, me being lazy, but it's not, you know, it's really just you not listening to what lights you up. And there's going to be shit things when you're building a business, when you're you're building a relationship, when you're like building a family, whatever it is that you're doing, not everything is actually, I would say probably a small percentage of stuff are what you really do it for. But like you were just saying, the journey is the character building, the the habits, all the little pieces and the blocks that build the mansion, you know? So, one thing that I like really had to get super clear on this year is just identifying what I'm procrastinating on because for a long time, I was walking through life blind, you know? And while being blind, I was also telling myself the story that oh, I'm so self-aware you know (laughs) but i'm self-aware of the things that i'm aware of of course but i'm oblivious to the things that i'm oblivious to Mm. you know it's one of those uh, weird conundrums of life life is your mirror and so if you're doing that thing and that you love and you're met with resistance or let's say you get ghosted or let's say you don't get that sale or let's say you Uh, not getting any results in your health and fitness journey. Okay, well, how is this me? Asking that question, how is that me? Where am I ghosting myself? What else am I saying that I will do and then I am not doing? Mm. I bet you if you go do that thing, your life will reflect that. Yeah. And then if you go do like that, um, the health and fitness journey, right? Like let's say you're not getting results. Okay. You're not getting momentum on the scales, okay? Where are you not getting everything like precise and where are you not uh, getting the results in other areas of your life? Like what else do you need to do that could potentially move the needle for you? Or same with business, like you're not getting that sale. Maybe they think that you're too expensive, okay? Well, where in my life am I projecting that things are too expensive? Mm Mm-hmm. And then changing those beliefs, starting to go, okay, changing your language and then watching how life will then reflect that back to you. Mm. Yeah, this showed up for me um, just, was it two weeks ago, I had one of our monthly mastermind meetups. Yeah. And I kind of, the, the practice is at the beginning, we say one thing that we like was a win from the month and then one thing that we're struggling with. And one of my things that I was struggling with was like, oh, you know, I'm trying to get people on like these retainers and stuff, but like it's the end of the year and no one wants to buy, <laughs> you know? Um, and then one of the one of the ladies in the group, she's like, okay, well, where does like where does that belief show up for you? Like, do you believe that it's the end of the year and you don't buy like expensive things at the end of the year? Because, you know, I'll start in January. It's like, do you believe that? And I was like, yeah <laughs> like I was telling myself that story before even entering the sales calls mm. I've just been like oh you know don't beat yourself up like it's the end of the year but people want to start in January blah blah so then my conviction in the sales like presentations was poor because yeah. I wasn't certain that they need to start it right now for the to best serve them and then when I like had that and you know epiphanies don't have to be these big life-altering things it was just a little like okay, that's happening. Get out of your own fucking way. That's what this podcast is going to be called, I think. <laughs> um, and, you know, get out get out of your own way and just get on the call again. So, I, I set up another time um, and I was just like, hey, want some feedback on like this conversation, da-da-da-da-da. Uh, is there a reason why like you don't feel 
like now's the right time, all this kind of stuff. And then because I was coming at it from a place of like certainty and pure curiosity, we ended up signing, you know, Mm. and it's like a 12 month agreement and we're about to crush it. We're not launching till midway through January, but because of the conviction I had is like, okay, yeah, let's just start now, you Mm. know, and then we're working on the launch up until then. Yeah. Which gives us more time and, you know, something to look forward to for the new year for, for him and definitely for me as well. So, that was a, a real lesson of projection. Mm. You know, my beliefs were projecting through. Although I never once said in the sales presentation like, oh, I know it's the end of the year and stuff's probably busy for you. I was thinking that. It's your energy, mm-hmm. right? Like, And same thing... I remember earlier in the podcast, you mentioned that you had all of these businesses, right? Mm -hmm. And if you had all of these businesses because you truly energetically thought they were all going to be amazing and you like, you love them so much, then yeah, they probably would have just taken off. Mm -hmm. And you did mention that you had them all because of the underlying subconscious belief that, well, like they're not going to work out. So the more that I have, the more likely the more I am I have, to succeed. Yeah. So because you already had that like slight wobble of scarcity in your frequency, of course, none of them like fully went off. So now mm. that you can focus solely your energy on just one, you will now have that certainty and approach your sales calls with certainty, approach your content with certainty. It will come across in your social media and people will just see Mm. because they don't like how many people are out there doing film and photography right so many and it doesn't matter because there's only one you Mm -hmm. there's only one you and that just means that people aren't actually buying your stuff yes they're gonna love it and use it however they're buying you Mm. like you are the frequency by jumping in in a container with myself in coaching people are buying me not necessarily the, the wisdom that I have to share. The wisdom never runs out, mm-hmm. right? It's always going to be ever evolving and expanding, especially as I grow, right? I grow a million miles an hour. And like my clients come with me because they want to be in that frequency and they want to grow fast too. Mm. So if, same with yourself and your business. Like people will come into your podcast. They will come to your business because they want to connect and co-create with you and your energy. Mm. And when that happens... Like they elevate to, you elevate to, and it's like, it just feels amazing. Yeah. And like identity in, you know, I'm going to use like business as an example because it's the thing I'm (laughs) most familiar with. But like identity in business, identity in life is so powerful. And then one of the things that I realized was like when I would meet someone new and I introduce myself and they're like, oh, what do you do? It was always a really complicated answer for me. Because I was kind of like, oh, I can do whatever the fuck you want. Like, because it's somewhat true. Like, I have so such a broad skill set because I have never committed to one thing and gone deep. Mm. You know, I am quite good at a broad range of things. So, whenever someone would be like, oh, you know, what do you do? I was like, well, I have, I have this, 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 this. <laughs> and they, you just see their eyes glaze over. I'm like, well, that was a waste of an introduction. Yeah. And, the same thing was happening in my work routine as well. Like, you know, one day I'm like the fashion dude and I'm in that personality and I'm going hard on the Anarchy Instagram and like pushing fashion, fashion, fashion. And then like the web and graphics business is completely neglected because I don't want to step into that character. Like, and then I'd just bounce between and then none of them would get the, it'd be like a single child getting passed between (laughs) mom and and dad it's like two different environments Mm. you know um so that the child ends up just being confused because they're like okay well who actually am i you know yeah you also mentioned the word despise and like my Mm. whole body was like oh despise like if you think about the energy of that feeling that emotion like that's worse than anger or Mm. sadness like that's deep and dark right when you're feeling that when you have that wobble like of course the things that you want don't have that Mm -hmm. then how can you attract the things that you want if you've got like the despise of like i don't want to do that Mm. thing right and so when we actually think a thought we then produce an emotion 
yeah? We have a chemical reaction in our body that produces an emotion, despise in this case. That energy in your body then produces an electromagnetic field around you and it then attracts more things unto itself Mm. of that same energy. It's like the saying, birds of feather flock together, like attracts like. Yeah. Have you ever gone to a event and ended up bumping into that person that was just exactly like you, your person? Mm. Like, of course I bump into you. We've got so many things in common. That's because your energy attracted each other. So if you've got this despise going on or any major negative emotion or limiting belief, right, of course you're going to start attracting more things that are similar to that. Mm towards you and so I that's why I always say it's really important if you've got those challenges got those obstacles or got that triggering person in your life right now like think about okay well how is this me how is that person reflecting back to me me and with my coaching like that is what I go hardcore with like I really like I hear my client's story once and I go, okay, how is this you? How are you creating this? And we really push them outside of their comfort zone so they, they can actually be feeling empowered to elevate themselves rather than just sit in that shit and play victim of like, oh, poor me. Like, no, actually we can make a decision right now to mm. change in this moment because all you have is now. And so it doesn't matter about the past or what's happened. Like you, if you decide now, like from a place of, I can do this. Like this is what I truly love and enjoy and this is what lights me up. Like you can do whatever you want because you you lead from that energy. When you step into that energy, you lead. So you stepping into that energy through like your film and your media and all that kind of stuff, like that is you leading mm. and your people will come. So speaking of making the decision to change, I think we should leave a beautiful audience with – some value and that camera's about to die so I'm going to change the <laughs> real quick pause cool. alright that was a little bit of a kerfuffle there um, hold on <laughs> yes as I was saying um, I'm currently moving house so cameras are flat batteries are flat all that kind of stuff but we pulled through we found another battery and everything is perfect always so we want to round out this episode with some value for you guys now elise does not believe in goal setting and she's about to (laughs) tell us why i'm sure it's a really good reason because she's quite uh quite an intelligent woman and i i can see where she's coming from like goals to me seem like these things that there must be nices. You know, they're not necessarily things that we already own. They're like, oh, wouldn't that be good if that goal happened? You know, they're like these intangible things up in the ether somewhere. And one thing I want to kind of share with you guys right now is just a really simple strategy. And I use the word strategy specifically to make sure that you actually are on path next year. And not just next year, but for the next five years, because the big difference between someone who ends up living the life that they have fantasized about and then someone who is just stuck in the fantasy world is someone who knows whether they're on track or not. That's the big difference. Like we can show up every single day and work our asses off on these really big goals, but if we don't know whether we're moving in the right direction, then we could be spending all our effort taking us further and further and further away from the goal like I have been doing for the last eight years. So, really simple and try and bear with me, guys. Um, I might do a YouTube video on this just to go further in depth. I'll probably record that next week just to give you visual. But basically what we're going to be doing here, this is a five-year strategy. And first of all, you need to spend some time to think about what does your life look like? Get super granular and this isn't on a time limit right now. Just get clear on, okay, what does my life look like? What emotional state am I in all the time? Am I happy all the time? Am I enthused? Am I excited to get up every day? Do I work out often? Am I married? Am I in a relationship? You know, am I single? Like, do I live in Mexico? Do I live on the Gold Coast? Do I live in a high rise? Do I drive a Camry or do I drive a Bugatti? Like, get super granular about 
what your life looks like in the physical and the emotional. And then what we're going to do, we're going to reverse engineer five years from now. Now, one thing I want to really touch on is don't allow your perfectionism to get in the way here because you don't necessarily know what exact apartment you're going to be living in in five years time. But the one thing that will be true is if you say, I want to live in a beachside apartment on the Gold Coast, that might end up being Mexico, but you live in a beachside apartment and you're killing life. So, don't allow your perfectionism to get in the way here. So, what we're going to do, it's broken up into three sections. So, to make it easier for us to digest, each year is broken up in your basically the overarching goal. So, the, the things you want to achieve, the details of that goal, and then why you've achieved it. So, for instance... Um, in five years' time, Anarchy Studios is going to be a $15 million podcast production agency um, servicing clients all around the world um, with shows of over with 1 million listeners plus. You know, that's the benchmark. We, we're going to be working with yeah. shows with 1 million listeners plus. Oh, yeah. All right. So that's the overarching goal. Now, underneath that is where how I define like the things around that goal. So we have a. Uh, I'm just pulling shit out of thin air right now. Um, <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> say, for instance, we have a, you know, uh, a two-acre studio um, on the Gold Coast, which with full service capabilities, um, co-working space, podcasts, studios, branding agencies, third-party logistics, all this kind of stuff. Um, I bought the apartment for. Uh, I bought the warehouse for 1.1 million. Um, out the front is my black matte black Lamborghini Urus with the license plate Anarchy, and like I, I'm giving you examples here, guys, because I want you to build a mental picture of what this life looks like. And dream big. Do it, yeah. Dream big. Do it in dot point as well. So don't try and like for these first two sections. Do it in dot point. Um, also, make sure you list how much money you're earning there. If that's a if that's a, a thing for you. Um, Make sure you get granular like, you know, I'm earning $1 million from my business and $2 million in passive from my investments. You know what I mean? Just get super granular. And then in the third section, so we've first outlined the major goal, then we've outlined the details and then we're outlining the third section which is why have I achieved this? This is the most important part. Okay, why have I achieved this? Because I have shown up consistently every single week and put out episodes with high value speaking to high value guests from all around the world. Number one, that's why I've achieved it. Number two is I have found a vehicle that I am passionate about and it becomes effortless to me. That's another reason why I've achieved it. Number two is because I maintain and foster meaningful relationships with high value individuals. That's another reason. Now, just go down the list. All the reasons why. Another reason why I have a you know $10 million portfolio is because consistently every week I invest $1,000. You know, however this fits into your life and your goals, make sure that should be the longest list. Why you have achieved it because that's what's going to put in place a roadmap to the kind of habits that you need to have to fulfill this goal. All right. I'm going to move fast because I am going to actually do an episode on this. I feel like it's too valuable to rush over. So once you've done year five, then go back to year one. Okay. So the most important years here are year one and year five. Year five is your flag in the sand where I'm heading. And year one is what you have to do next year in 2023. Because well, right now, why wait? That's exactly right. Right now, yesterday. <laughs> so you're doing the exact same thing for year one. So just try and forecast. If in year five you're doing, you've got earning ten million dollars a year. Try and forecast. Okay, well, in year one, I'm going to earn one thousand one hundred thousand dollars in my business and have fifty thousand dollars in passive income investments. You know, that's just might be an example if you have financial goals or year one for me. So next year, the my overarching goal is to set up Anarchy HQ, which is a creative space, like a smaller version of the thing that I just detailed to you in year five. 
So that is my one goal. If I achieve, well, when I achieve that next mm, year, good. <laughs> I saw you there. Yeah, you my had NLP to pull me up. was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> when I achieve that next year, I know I'm going to be well and truly on track. You know, that's that's a huge indicator for me to know that I'm well and truly on track. Yeah. Now, in order for me to get that space. So I've, I'm not going to go through all the details again, like what my life looks like next year, what the space looks like, all this kinds of stuff, what my business looks like, the type of clients that I service, you know, all these kinds of stuff, how I show up in sales calls, that's all in the details of the goal. And the reason why I am going to achieve that next year is because every single week, I try and I scout for 15 new possible locations. I speak to five potential clients um, about our services. I prospect. I, I all, do all these things. I continue to show up every single week and have high-value conversations with high-value guests and put out a world-class podcast. All these habits of why I'm going to achieve this thing is exactly why I'm going to achieve the thing. You understand why this is the most important part of it? Like Goal setting is all well and good, but... If we just focus on the habit, then the rest is inevitable, you know, and your goal, like your outcome might change slightly, but if you've got the habits in place, whatever outcome you get is going to be brilliant and you're going to be very, very happy with it. So, I know I've brushed over that and it's super powerful, so I'll I'll go over it again quickly. Do year five first, set your you know, sales in the distance, where I'm heading, big vision. Don't even allow yourself to think, oh, is this possible in five years? Because as I have learned this morning when I got up at 3.30 to pack (laughs) down an entire house before seven o'clock, you can compress time with enough enthusiasm. (laughs) You can do incredible things in five years. So, set those goals high and you might even find yourself achieving them in four. So, set those goals really high. But make sure you document the details of the goal and then you're wanting to detail why you've achieved it. Now, this is the strategy kind of thing because goals without a strategy are just these must be nices that we float around to give ourselves these dopamine hits on the 1st of every January. (laughs) So, um, do year five, then go back to year one. With year one, break it down. So, what do I do in the first quarter? What do I do in the second quarter? What do I do in the third quarter? What do I do in the fourth quarter? Get super granular because that's the most important year. That's what's going to start your momentum. Do the same thing for year two. Do the same thing for year three. Do the same thing for year four. I would recommend just going through and doing it section by section. So, you just do all of the main goal for all five years, then come back and do the details for all five years, then come back and do the this is why I've achieved them. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in details, just really fast dot point, allow energy to flow through you. Um, Stay tuned for a YouTube episode on that because I really want to drill this home. It's super, 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 super powerful. (laughs) It's actually the reason, one of the reasons that kind of got me clear on needing to stop anarchy Mm. because... As I was filling out this five-year goal, it didn't show up. Yeah. You know, it didn't show up anywhere. So, it's actually, it's a pretty powerful exercise for you to get clear on what your internal person is trying to tell you essentially. I love that. That was awesome, Jack. Like, I have done that before Mm. and yeah, 100%, you get a lot of clarity when you start to look at the big picture things and realize, well, hang on, like this thing I'm doing right now, like how is that actually serving me? It's Mm. not, it's just diverting my energy from what I actually truly want. So amazing. Go do that, guys. Cool. So Jack's like, yeah, Elise doesn't believe in goals. (laughs) (laughs) Now, this is super interesting concept and you might be like, what the hell, Elise? So the other day I was just mentioning to Jack before we started recording that I went to Sydney and witnessed one of my mentors speak on stage. I listen to her every day. It's like her name's Abraham or Esther Hicks and she channels interdimensional beings called Abraham. So believe what you will. However, she gets on stage and she speaks a lot about energy, frequency, law of attraction and a lot of the stuff that I teach is a very big mix of her and Joe Dispenza. So that's kind of what I do within my coaching containers. And 
it was interesting. I sat next to this lady and she said to me, Elise, what are you manifesting? Like, what are, you, what are your goals? And I said, well, I don't have goals because they're already done. Saying that I have a goal means that to me, I haven't achieved it yet. When actually I have, like energetically, the goals that I have, the fact that I can imagine me five years from now and what I will be doing and achieving and who I will be, like the fact that I can imagine that means it's already done. The person that invented electricity would not have invented electricity if they didn't have the concept in their mind first. The power of your mind is so powerful and it's been shown time and time again in studies, so many studies. And for me, I said to this lady, I don't have goals because they're already done. So right now, my goal, if I was to have one, it would be to feel good, to enjoy the journey on my way towards those things because those things will drop in. And yes, I don't just say like, you don't do nothing and it's going to appear in front of your face because if you, if I was to do nothing, I wouldn't feel good. I love what I do. I love running events. I love coaching and I love doing my podcast. I love having conversations like this. And for me, these are all my habits that I integrate into my life now every single day that allows me to build that momentum towards those things that I want. Because when I'm in that energy of doing those things that I love, which is what I do for my work, right? I'm feeling those frequencies and energy of like love, passion, fun. That is literally the energy of what I want as well. And those things will come to me. And literally after having all of those like loops closed in my life of, oh, okay, well, it's all about the journey. It's all about the fun. So how can I take every next step from a place of inspiration, from a place of love? How can I go to the gym from a place of love whereby I work out because I love who I am already, not because I will only love myself when I get to a certain weight or size, right? My results in the past were always coming from a place of for love. I need to look a certain way so then I can be important, so then I can be noticed. And for me, that just led to a whole lot more insecurities and like shit vibes, honestly. (laughs) Shit vibes. Shit vibes. Like, let's just sum it up, (laughs) right? And same thing with business. It was like uh, um, when I first got into the coaching space, I was selling from a place of like, I didn't believe in myself. And if I am like feeling scarcity about money, then how am I going to show up to a sales call and get someone to invest into my frequency when I'm feeling scarce no way it like human beings are so intuitive and they can sense the energy whether that they know it or not like you can meet someone you can be super friendly with them and you can walk away being like oh that was a bit funny Mm. and you might not even know why but your soul does your soul always knows and like if you drop in from your head to your heart, you will always have the answers that come from within. So those next steps, those inspirational, like momentum, like inspired action things, the habits, Mm. right? Like that is going to ultimately lead you to those goals. And like you were saying before, it's like, wouldn't that be nice to have this? Yeah, well, would, is it also nice right now in this moment having this conversation with you knowing that like so many other people are going to be enjoying this too because I speak to my clients about this all the time especially in regards to money and I feel like sharing this right now will be helpful for those listening because it's quite relatable I have a lot of people in my life that say I, I want to win Tats Lotto <laughs> right I want to win Tats Lotto I mean who doesn't and so there's one person specifically in my life that I, they will always say this and I say, okay, well, what if the next day your bestest friend gave you a million dollars or like a big lump sum of money? Would you actually be able to receive that from them or would it have to only be via Tats Lotto? And the answer is always the same. If they received it from their best friend, they'd feel guilty. They'd feel a bit funny about it, not worthy of receiving. So it's like 
fixing that worthiness piece within you and realizing that it doesn't have to you don't have to rely on like a certain condition for you to then feel happy you don't have to wait to your weight <laughs> didn't mean that intentionally but here we go you don't have to wait w-a-i-t for your weight like kilograms how do you spell that <laughs> w-e-i-g-h-t <laughs> right you don't have to wait for you to get a certain size on the scales to then be happy you don't have to wait till your podcast goes viral to then be happy you don't have to wait till your business earns a certain amount and you have that lamborghini in the garage to be happy and enjoy being a part of your business because if you if if you had that like right now or tomorrow you miss the journey and all the amazing fun and exciting moments in between you don't have to get in that relationship tomorrow you just start talking in the day and you're gonna get married tomorrow it's like well what about all the fun Mm. in between of like doing that dance and like going on dates and being flirty like you miss that and that is why we're here. We're here to experience life. Like, yes, we didn't we didn't choose to to come here and go, I'll go forth and only experience positive momentum towards what I want. Because if everything was perfect and everything was like the way we want it to be in such a controlled oh, I'm getting so passionate, I'm whacking the microphone. If everything was in such a controlled um like with variables that are all controlled. It would be boring if you and I were the same. We had the same podcast and spoke about the same things. That would be so boring. Like what would make us different? What would make my thing unique to yours and vice versa? It's like saying before about there's so many other coaches out there and that's okay because if I was to start feeling scarcity and start comparing myself and being like, especially at the start of this conversation, if you guys remember, Like if you're feeling like, oh, I should have been further along by now, it's getting to the end of the year and I haven't done what I said I wanted to do. You're probably thinking that because you're comparing yourself to what everyone else is doing around you. If you were able to just go within and start enjoying that journey, like on your own and following your own heart and know that your time will come and you will receive that inspired action when you are ready like everything, every next step will just appear and it will feel effortless. It will feel easy. It will feel fun. Whether that is relationships, business, health and fitness, whatever it is that you feel called to go and do in your life right now or change in 2023, know that it's coming for you. It's already done. You've imagined it. It's in your mind, your body and your soul knows. So now you just receive, you receive that next step, you receive that next step, wait for that inspiration or oh, slur my words now. You wait for that inspiration and then you go. So you're probably wondering, how do I receive the inspiration? How do I know it's inspiration over motivation? And so my advice would be for you to do this. Find your form of meditation. And when I say that, for me, I personally have multiple ways that I meditate. And that could be, you know, the stereotypical crossing your legs and with your crystals and listening to, yeah, yeah. Or for me, it's actually also going and smashing out a session at the gym or going for a beach walk or listening to music, or just watching the sunset, or reading a book, talking to a friend on the phone, whatever it is that takes your mind off that thing. Because when you do, it releases that resistance and it allows for that answer to then come to you. It allows for that answer to be from love, to be received from within rather than I've got to think of an idea right now so I can fix that thing. So if I do this, then I'll get this result. It's like, no, we all know that feeling of when we get that shower thought. It's like, oh, that's such a good idea. I'm going to do that versus, oh, shit, I do not like what's going on in my life right now. How can I fix it? Mm. There's a difference in that energy. And so it's getting really clear on knowing that difference So meditation would be my first thing on how to receive that. And if you're finding you're struggling with that, take a nap. 
Napping is a vibe and yeah. it does. It releases all resistance. So if you're struggling in your life and you're finding it really hard to build that momentum and receive that inspiration, take a nap, take five and then come back to it when you're feeling better, when you're feeling ready. Because like I said, there is no goals. Your goal should be to feel good. So if you follow that, you follow your heart, you will be led to exactly where you need to be. Real quick, before we wrap up the show, I want you to think back to a point in today's episode where you had that aha moment, where you got absolute certainty. You're like, I know exactly what I need to do now moving forward. And then I want you to remember how you found out about this show. Was it on someone's story? Was it a conversation with a friend maybe? Then I want you to go ahead and pay it forward. Because the way that the law of reciprocity works is that by introducing someone to something of value, they will always equate you with that value. Now, you guys know I don't run ads to this show. Everything is grown 100% organically, word of mouth. Now, if you want to play a part in the growth of this show, bigger guests, better stories, more content, and you want to gift that aha moment to more people all across the world, go ahead and pay it forward. It costs you nothing but it could be priceless to someone who needs it. I like that. I feel like I need to incorporate a little bit more flow into my life. Mm. You know, everything is like planned and on, a, <laughs> on a timeline, Yeah, um, which is beneficial yeah. in a way. But um, I actually had a conversation with a medium the other day. Cool. Um, after she was on the podcast and she was like, Yo, do you mind if I like just share something with you? And she she basically told me that in you know, this whole conversation, there's there's entities that were trying to communicate with you and like they, they were t- letting me know that they've been trying to communicate with you your whole life and you're not letting them in. Um, <laughs> she's like, you know, there's this like purple aura um, that has like kind of been with you and guiding you, but you, you don't listen. And so she first asked me, she's like, you know, have you ever had like situations where like you've received communication and like not necessarily been clear on where it's come from? And I'm like, mm, I don't really think so because everything has been rationalized away. Well, when you're not aware of it, you're not aware of it, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, but one thing that she did mention is, you know, like, because I asked her, I was like, well, I'm consciously I'm open to receiving, but there is so much in my subconscious that just craves control of every variable. So I was like, how do I, how do I go about like, what's the word I'm looking for? Surrendering into kind of flow and just allowing that communication. And one thing that she said to me, which I think was really powerful. And she's like, well, we've just had the conversation. So the process has already started. And I feel like that's what this conversation is going to be for lots of people. Whatever nugget that you got from this, everyone listening right now, or you listening right now, (laughs) whatever nugget you got, something that hit home, whether it was one or two things or maybe three things or one thing or four things. Oh, no, it wouldn't just be one thing. I'm sure it would be many. Like, honestly, this conversation has been fire. It has been. But at the same time, like how many things can really land at the same time? Oh, we've we've had some really good ones today. All right. Well, if you got multiple things. I've got things, confidence. If you got multiple things, fantastic. But if it was one thing, just allow it to to flow through you and just really like put your ego aside and say, okay, well, why did that hit home for me? Whether it was, you know, the fact that you need to get out of your fucking way. If that hits you and that was a little bit painful don't dismiss it and don't seek comfort. Just re- like try and understand why that hit you because at the bottom of that pain is the answer. It always is when it, when it comes to this kind of conversation. So hope we provided some value to you guys. I've enjoyed this little collaboration. This has been yeah. so fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 100%. Like I know that you know this too when I say that every time – I'm on a podcast, whether it's, this is the first time collaborating, but collaborating Mm. and on my own as well, I just receive everything, that flow, that fun, that inspiration, like 
nothing else matters. Nothing and, else matters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it and honestly, that is when I know that this is part of my purpose. All right. The bell has gone off, guys. Uh, I love you all so much. This has been wicked. Yeah. You enjoyed yourself, Elise? I did. It was awesome. I love you guys. And I hope to see you more on my podcast, Generation Elevation. Wicked. And yeah, thanks, Jack. All awesome. links will be below. Um, whether Wherever you're listening to this, find that subscribe button, whether you're on Elise's podcast, whether you're on my podcast, mm-hmm. you're on YouTube, you're on wherever you are. Find that subscribe button, follow along because both of our missions are entirely funded and driven by the people. You know, we don't run ads, we don't do all that kind of stuff. We're just here trying to provide value. And that camera has just died again. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. That's okay. We're wrapping it up now. <laughs> all right. Love you guys. <laughs> Catch you later. Love you. <laughs> Bye. Oh, gang shit. That was fun. Yeah. Legitness. Yeah, it was, huh?